Hey, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to look into Azure Backup. My name is Tushan Sudhish and I'm your trainer for this AZ303 certification course. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. So let's first look into the Azure Virtual Machine architecture. Microsoft has an extension inside of every Azure VM. So when you configure backup, it communicates with Azure Backup Service and associates itself to a policy. And it identifies itself to an Azure Backup Service as a virtual machine and that the service should back it up accordingly. And when it's time for the backup or the backup policy, Microsoft sends a command to the Azure Backup extension and then Azure Backup orchestrate a VSS snapshot. Once the snapshot is available, it goes to your local VM storage as an instant recovery snapshot, which you can quickly recover from as it is in your VM storage. And in the background, the snapshot is compared to a snapshot of a previous recovery point and moves only the incremental blocks via HTTPS into the recovery services vault. And the recovery services vault has encryption enabled via server-side encryption so the backup is encrypted at rest and is protected while in transit. And when you secure your data via Azure Disk Encryption, you are given keys. The key encryption key and BitLocker encryption key, which go into Azure Key Vault and are also backed up via Azure Backup. Let's look into Microsoft Azure Backup Overview. Microsoft Azure Backup Service offers IT administrators the option to backup and protect critical data in an easily recoverable way from any location. The fundamental workflow when you backup and restore files and folders to and from Microsoft Azure Backup using the Microsoft Azure Backup Agent are similar workflow that you would experience using any other type of backup. Much like the Windows Server Backup, you identify the items to backup and then the items can be copied to a storage where they can be accessed later if they are needed. The difference is that with Azure Backup, the data is compressed and encrypted and the final destination is in the cloud. Now let us look into the Azure Backup key features. The first one is Microsoft Azure Backup offers block level incremental backups. The backup agent performs incremental backups by tracking file and block level changes and only transferring the changed blocks, hence reducing the storage and bandwidth utilization. Different point in time version of the backup use the storage efficiently by only storing the changed blocks between the versions. Second is data integrity is verified in the cloud. In addition to secure backup, the backed up data is also automatically checked for integrity once the backup is done. As a result, any corruptions which may arise due to data transfer can be easily identified and are fixed automatically. Another feature is you get configurable retention policies for storing data in the cloud. The Microsoft Azure Backup Service accepts and implements retention policies to recycle backups that exceed the desired retention range, thereby meeting business policies and managing backup cost. Let's have a look into the Azure IaaS Backup Components. The Azure portal provides a wizard which is built into the portal to help guide through the process of choosing the component to download and deploy. And the wizard, which is part of the Recovery Services Vault creation, walks through the steps for selecting a backup goal and choosing the data or application to protect. Depending on the individual component, Azure Backup Components have certain advantages or limitations and differences in what is protected and where the backup is stored. Some of the benefits of Azure Backup Server include this will give you full flexibility for when you take your backup. You can backup your Linux, Hyper-V and VMware VMs. But some of the limitations could be you cannot backup Oracle workload or always require live Azure subscription. And some of the workload which you can protect are files, folder, volumes, VMs, applications, etc. 
one great advantage what I see with Azure Backup Server is you get an ability to keep a local copy of your backup as well along with your recovery services vault. So if you look at Azure ISVM, some of the benefits include you don't need any sort of agent installation and it natively supports the backup for your Windows and Linux VM. Some of the limitations are you can only have one snapshot per day and restore VMs only at a disk level. All of your backup is being stored in the recovery services vault. Now let me take you to the recovery services vault and show you how you can perform the backup. I'm on my Azure portal. You can search for recovery services vault and select your recovery services vault. As you can see that I already have one vault available. If you want to create a new one, click on create new and provide details like your resource group, vault name, and basically that's about it. And you can click on review and create. After you create a recovery services vault, there are a couple of actions you can perform. First, you can use recovery services vault for backup and then you can use it for site recovery. I will talk about site recovery later. Let's go to the backup. So a recovery services vault is a storage entity in Azure that houses data. The data is typically copies of data or configuration information of a virtual machines, workload, servers, or workstations. When you try to create backup, the first thing it is going to ask is, where is your workload running? Is it on Azure, Azure Stack, or on-premises? So based on your preference, what you can backup on, and the options will vary. So if I choose on-prem, as you notice, the options available for me is completely different compared to what it is available for me when I choose the workload type in Azure. So if I want to back up something in Azure, I can select Azure. Then I can select what type of workload it is. Is it a virtual machine or an Azure file or an SQL server running in Azure VM? If I have any DBs running in Azure, this will discover and tell me which server to backup. I'm going to choose virtual machine and click on backup. So by default, there is a default policy available. So if I want, I can create a different policy as well. And this tells you when at what time you are backing up this virtual machine. On the virtual machine page, this is where you can go and pick up which virtual machine from your subscription you want to include within this backup policy. And once you select that, you can basically go and enable backup. Similarly, if you want to backup a workload in on-prem, all you have to do is select on-prem and this gives you an ability to select files or VMs. So let me show you a couple of things here. If you want to just backup files or folders from on-prem, select that and prepare the infrastructure. All you have to do is download the recovery services agent and install it on your local Windows server or Windows client. So if I go back to the recovery services vault and backup, and this time instead of files and folder, I'm going to select a Hyper-V VM and click on prepare infrastructure. So this time, if you notice, the option changed from recovery services vault agent to a backup server. So this is called Microsoft Azure Backup Server or MAP Server. So you download and install and configure the server, then you will have an ability to backup all the workloads in Azure. Then you will have an ability to configure backup for your workloads running on-prem. That concludes the lesson on Azure Backup. In the next video, we're going to look into Azure Site Recovery. I will see you on the next one. Until then, take care.